uh, we should be good to go. And welcome everybody uh, to SimSol's first webinar for uh, SimSol 8 features. Well, we're very happy for uh, putting out 8. We do have some uh, really good improvements, we believe. And um, a lot of it is just maybe me a little learning curve, but I'm going to show you the tricks on it. Okay. On the SimSol 8 from the 7, uh, we have um, our claim grid looks a little bit different, as you can see here. Okay, so you're probably wondering, you know, what this information is right here, and I also have a picture. Now, um, remember that this will be blank, and you need to actually have on the photo, uh, your photos, excuse me, must be put into the claim file before, in order for that photo module to work off that particular claim. And it's very easy to do. Uh, I already have some preloaded photos that are already in this claim here. So this is a, a, an existing claim. So as I click on this, it brings up our clodo, uh, claim photo previewer. And then I can pick whatever photo that I want to actually represent my title for that house. So at, basically I pick it and there, and it, when I get out of it, it'll, it'll change. There we go. That's a lovely cabinet. I think uh, we can fix that one up. Uh, but anyways, so it does have, if you take a look at this claim file here, we also added all the crucial information, which is the primary policy holder location, you know, probably mobile work and phone of, of your insureds. So that's, that's pretty handy. So as you don't have to go into the claim, you can be right from the um, claims grid and then select it, and then it'll give you all the information that you have in your system. So I think that's pretty handy, okay? Another thing is is that um, we have uh, the agency information and milestone dates. So we wanna make sure that uh, you, you, you do the milestones, and that's I try to stress that on every claim. So let me just go into a claim real quick. This happens to be an empty claim that I've set up and it's just been put in. And the milestones off from here are located right over in from the loss information. So please um, take advantage of try to try to fill your milestones. Okay, so I'm gonna place this right over here. The reason why I say that is it's very crucial information. It keeps the claim fluent uh, so you know what the date of inspection is, the date closed, the date invoice. My happen, my favorite is actually date paid. That always works very well. And with the date received, assigned, and contact closed, that automatically updates the claim. Okay. And so, for example, if you're on ClaimsWire, which is a, a sister product of ours, it automatically will pu push that data to the carrier. So, um, and also your uh, schedule of appointments. So, um, try to use the important claim dates or the milestones, as we call it, and as you do something. So you, if you have the received, assigned, the contact, please put that in. That really helps. And then the the date closed, that's pretty crucial, invoiced and date paid. So anyways, that's uh, that's the important thing on the important date fields, and we need to do that. Another thing that, uh, which is kind of nice, this has have been in seven for many years, is the map function. Actually, it'll show you where it is on the map, which is kind of nice. Okay, so I can actually just bring this over and it, it, it shows you right where my loss is right there. And there is a mockingbird lane in the city of Orlando, go figure. So that's, that works out pretty good. But it gives you kind of like, for example, the exposure of where that claim resides uh, within the city, so you can make an intelligent decision on where where you want to go uh, see those losses at. Okay, so that's just a little map function that that's in there. Okay, on the SimSol eight, um, I showed you what the grid is, but I'm actually in the claim now. Uh, what what's nice about the system here is um, you, we have we have filters. Um, this one it did not pick up the filter, um, so which filter is that you can go in and you can uh, search for all kinds of different claims on that. And 
I, I was looking for that. And it, it actually finds your claims faster. Personally, what I do is I come over here to the show claims grid off from here, and that's where your filter is going to be located. Um, so you go on your grid, and then we can go and search for any of this. We can do for all month. I can do all claims, isolate it to the drawers. I can do um, viewed last day, last week. If I need to put in Munster, so as I select that, then I can click on the search on that. I can actually do it by zip code and state. So I have a lot of power with the, with the filter, which is kind of nice, and it'll bring it up. I can click on all, which is here, and now try the filter. So those are the monsters that I have within um, all these drawers. I can also leave that blank and then select a certain policy. So if the phone rings or something of that nature and you need to find a claim and you have many drawers, you can just simply go to filter from the grid, click on the policy number, and it'll take you right to that claim. Makes it nice and easy. If you have a claimant's phone number, you can actually sort the claim by the phone number if it's in. So this is kind of kind of nice to clear the filters. You just clear that like that, and that puts you back to the default. Okay, so remember that the filter operation is off of your main claims grid, okay? And that's that's a brand new feature that we have in our system. All right, the big thing that we've done, I'm gonna come back here to the SimSol 8 uh, seminar here on, the, on my um, drawer is we really vamped up the claim photo previewer, okay? And it allows you to actually work more efficiently. The screen provides claim information on the right-hand side on the claims grid. Uh, we have a lot of our users that says, well, I do it this way. Well, we went back and re-engineered it because we didn't think you wanted to do it that way, but we did go back and um, I'll show you the both ways that people are doing of, of adding their their comment section you can add it before it goes in to the actual claims uh, itself or after the claim I always like to take everything in and then add it afterwards but a lot of the adjusters like to do it before and one thing about the module is kind of neat I'm going to get into the, the SimSol system is that um, when I go down to digital photos which is right here, I can access that two ways. One, I have a digital photo here or a photo inboard, either or, okay? Um, I can do a single image or I can do a group of images. And mainly everybody clicks on the thumbnail import, okay? So I can click on the thumbnail import and then I can select uh, the image location. My last location was Fire Photos, so um, I can actually put that in or I can use my browse button. So new users, they need to know where that browse button is. That's that little floppy drive right there that you see. It's very important to take the date taken, okay? So when you take it or when you do the inspection date, please put in the date taken before you start doing anything. That just guarantees you that you're not gonna have an issue, okay? So I'm going to come up here and click on this, and I'm going to. I have some on my my Dropbox, or excuse me, on my uh, desktop. As you can see, that it remembers my um, last uh, file format. So I can come over here and and then come back up to my desktop. I can then select it on whatever images that I want, and then and then pick it. So let me get some, I have two sample flood and I've got a Swanee flood. Let's, let's pick a sample flood here, or a Swanee flood, excuse me. So as you can see, when I do that, it brings up our, our, our uh, thumbnails of this. So these are all the thumbnails. Now, what you can do, um, you, I, can, I always click on okay and then and select them and bring them in. 
some some adjusters wanted were picking this this thumbnail and nothing's going to happen. All this does is to lock down that folder. So you need to click OK. Now I'm in the system. Now this room this is like the Windows 7 version that you have. I can then come up and hit Show Picks. Please remember to put the date taken in. Uh, I have a lot of adjusters that really don't come up and um, actually show their uh, preview of the thumbnails in a thumbnail operation. What they do is they just hit select all and then hit import because it's easier to um, delete than it is to add. So as you can see, here's a the Munster property. And once you start the thumbnail processing, you can't stop it. I mean, I can stop it with the stop button, but and then start over. I let the operation continue, but you do have that ability right here. All right, it's almost done. As you can see, I have quite a bit of photos in there, and I wanted to bring a large, an actual claim file in here uh, to show you what what the photos, how long it takes to, to come in and populate. It, now, remember that when it reads these photos, and I want to stress this very much, if your cameras are set to 8 gig or 4 gig or however, however the size limit of the camera, do yourself a favor and go to your camera settings and take it to the lowest setting. Um, for for most new cameras, they're like just under a gig, you know, uh, excuse me, a meg size. So what you you know, so what you want to do is set it to the lowest setting. When we bring these photos in, however, we do downsample them to 800 by 600. Okay, 800 by 600. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select all um, and I'm gonna bring them in. Oh, before I do this though, let me just show you the old way because everybody was wanting to do that. Um, what you'll do is you'll pick the from this, but it's not in SimSol yet. This is still um, pretty much in RAM. It's, these files have not been transferred to the file as of yet. So if you needed to come up and, and you want to comment from here, you may do so. Just double click on that. And what I'm going to do is slide over the, the actual photo image information. And then you see the button that says check import. So it will place a checkbox in there and then you can then comment these images. Okay, make sure that your date taken is set and then you can take it by adjuster or you could take it by contractor insured. Okay, so we do have spell check, yes. So if you can't spell cat, then you can just click on the ABC and then pop that in. If you want to go to the next one, you're going to select it. But remember that you're going to lose the import button, which is right here. So if you really want that one, you can select it or we can go on to the next one and then you can comment it out. And you can do that for for all, all the photos that you want to bring in, okay? There's also a comment library. Please don't forget about that. And you can say that we're in the bathroom, the bedroom, and then select it. I'm gonna click okay. And from that, that's the old way of actually uh, bringing it in. You can also hit select all and click on import, which will take all my images. Now the processing of the thumbnails is down sampling these photos to at 800 by 600, but it's also creating the thumbnails. If you take a look why this is doing this, 
as you can see, the area photos uh, section in the right hand side, it has all the rooms that you have defined. Now, I haven't talked about that. So, when in the new system, I recommend that you would go to scope of damage and create your areas first and then import the areas. And that's going to give you an advantage because it will automatically place, you know, when you drag these over, it will print with the associated areas. So that's that works out fairly well. So here's my basement, here's my living room. It's still processing the, the photos. It is working in the background here. So it's picking all these photos up. And I could have just checked box the ones that I wanted to bring in and they would have just brought in. I was I usually do personally is is um import them all and then delete them if I didn't need them. Now this um it says processing thumbnails. This has to read a lot of uh, photos. So we have found, we did time studies on this. And so if I had 300 photos, it would take right around under a minute. This one was like 150, I think. I'm just waiting for these uh, these photos processing thumbnails to finish up. Once that's done, you will be posted with your photos over here in the ungroup section, and your items areas would be listed here. There they are. Okay, so once you have them all imported in, guys, um, you you will have all the defined areas already done. I'm just going to show you how to define those areas. It's really easy. It's just going to the scope of damage and then actually creating your areas defines the area for the photo module. So I'm going to go back to digital photos and then I can then comment them. So for example, I have this image here and I want to say that that's, let's say, bedroom number two. Let me see what room I have here. Got the let's call it the living room. Okay, so let's say that these are all part of the live the these photos here are part of the living room. What I can do is I'm going to show you a little trick is I can actually group these photos and then rename them. So for example, I want to take this image here to this image down to 0871. I could use my shift key and as you can see that I have them all marked in dark blue. Those are marked. Then I can just simply come up here to image and then select it and call it bedroom number one. And then I can use the option for renaming. So now you can see that I have bedroom number one photo one, two, three, four, five, six. And then what I could do is just take this right into the the bedroom if I needed to. Let's see if I've got here. Basement. Study. Let's see here. I named it the wrong one here. Let me let me just put these these images right into let's say that this is the bedroom. So I can come over here to bedroom number one, select it which is already grouped, and then just move it and there they are. That's how easy it is to do. Now if we print it we can say, oh, we want this at uh, the bottom or the top or in the middle and all those photos that are grouped with any comments. Um, once, usually um, what the, some of the adjusters are doing now is they're just grouping these. They're not really doing the commenting until it gets into the actual area that they want. That way they can see it. They know it's, it's assigned to that, that area name. So for example, if I can come up here like this and then select it, 
I'm going to move it over here. There we go. And then I can say, okay, here's bedroom number one. And then I can just see it's already named that. I can just come over here and just put the comment in. Okay, and I can also change and annotate it. Okay, so in my dim, digital imager, I have, it's a, this is a little bit different from the seven. Okay, we have the image information, which is what you're used to. It also, if you really want to show it, is show the EXIF. What is that? That's what the camera actually takes, and, and we capture that data. So we know what the resolution is, and mine is 72 by 72 inches. So I can turn that off. That's turned off by default, but you do have that ability. The next thing is the annotation. We kind of clean that up a little bit because it um, well, it's more grouped in. So if I click on the annotation tab, it gives me my tools for the annotation. So for example, I want to draw arrow. Let's say that that's my water line. Okay, and then from that, I can actually add a comment. Now, when you add a comment, it's the A text that has not changed. So as you click on this, and you can left click and drag to the desired text box, or, or you, that's exactly what I did here, I can then say waterline. Okay, now what you need to do, this is what I do, is when you're at your last uh, line, or the last character, excuse me, just give a space bar like that. And then that way, when you click off the um, water line, it, it centers that right in there. Um, when you click on this, it always likes to add another little text box. I just come over here, and, and then I just hit the X up here, and that will delete it. Okay. But so when you click on the image, uh, it will then save it. But always give a little space. See how that I put that space in, and now if you're doing a box around here, it fits nicely. Okay. Uh, you can always um, suppress it, uh, bring it, suppress it to the back or the front if you have layering. So that does give you this opportunity right here. I can also edit the font, but I have to mark it. Remember, it's the same thing as a diagram. You have to use the arrow, place it on the canvas, and look, see your handles here? When I have the handles, I can actually move this and make it bigger or smaller okay so once you get out of that so my i have that in there um i can also change the pin width the pin style and make it clear so if i wanted to fill it in with with the white i could do so i like it clear because it gives a good transparency on that i can also use a box and then highlight something like that. Let's say my mirror is, if you're trying to say something, you need to circle. Um, if you need to draw, you can. Um, I'm going to use my X, whatever is marked. Okay, and I use the blue arrow to mark this. So if you make a mistake, you can then mark it and then hit the red X and that will get it out for you. And that's what it's for. Okay, I can also do a circle. I can do other different types of shapes. Okay, so that's available for you to use. Okay, um, when we come up to rotate, we do have that ability. So I can actually rotate the, the um, photo at you know, 90 degree integrals. Okay, do not use the rotate one. Uh, they will be deleted. I, I never do use that one, but use the rotate 90, rotate uh, left, and rotate 90 right. So that works real well. You have the ability to put a new image in by just selecting open image. And if you need to export it for whatever reason, you could click on the export and then save it. So you can see there's a save button off from there. Okay, so um, remember that does tell you that the images have now been downsize 800 by 600 so we can go to the next one and then and add that but if we renamed it 
like like we did before it came in, uh, then for example, then it would show up here and then you can go right to your image comment. So that's why I like to re use a group, re group rename function and it saves a lot of time. So as I put this in, as you can see, I can then comment on it. When I'm done, I can then come up and select done. Okay, so you can you can group it in here as well. If you need to add the annotations, or if like you see right here, I need to, excuse me, I'm moving it over. I need to um, actually rotate this. And that's how easy it is. Put your name in, or digital image name, and then put your comment. So that's um, that's how the new uh, photo module works. I'm just going to come up here and grab some other images, and then I can place them in to whatever room that I want. So as you can see, here's maybe the kitchen, bathroom. There we go. Here's some kitchen photos. So basically, I'm using now. Uh, I can use the shift key, which I demonstrated earlier, but what I could do here is I can use the control key in holding it down and then selecting the photos that I want. Once I have them in there, I just move them over to the kitchen and then let go. That's how easy it is. So you can place them all in your uh, estimate areas. And so we can see the thumbnails either from a building estimate, an APS, or contents. So uh, we can assign we can assign these area names, which ones you want to see from building APS or personal property. So that's available for you to use. So the next thing is printing them. So if you'd like to print them, you can take your mouse and click Print Global Print Screen, and Remember, when you grab these, here are your photo images right here. I can just left click and I can then move them over to the selected printed items. Nothing has changed there. So now it's bringing all the images over associated to the areas. So take a look over to the images available. These are the unassigned, means those are the ungrouped images and you can grab those if you need be. But I'm going to scroll down because I want to show you that I've got other areas, which is basement. And, and if I need to grab all my basement files, check this out. This is really cool. Take your basement and move it over. All the images that are associated to that room will come right over. Okay. Take the kitchen, place them over there, moves them all over for you. And then if you need the study or the exterior, you may do so, okay? So you can grab these as a group and move them over to the ordered printed images. Now, another thing that really was, um, that took a lot of time is that if you had to take um, a group of images and you can only move them one by one uh, up the chain here. But let me show you a little trick here. So if I can come down, here to the images. Got my images here. I'm looking for the group name. I believe those are all the images. Yeah, that's for the bedroom that we used. I can actually take one of these, like 15, and move that up. Take one of the images 0895 and move them up. Okay, so I have I have that ability. Okay, I also have print two images per page, but if you need four, eight, or sixteen, that's available. If you need to insert number of blank photos, that is available as well. Okay, so when you grab them, you can just take that group and then move them. 
see if I can move this one up. There's a little trick if I uh, can move that one up here. No, it's not going to let me do it. You have to do it from the ordered print images. Okay. All right, so once we do that, we're going to take a look at that and click on done. I can either print, I can, excuse me, I can either go to print and then do a print preview or go to the printer. If you had a claims wire, if this was a claims wire file, it would show up there. So here we have our um, photos that came in, our annotations. And what's nice, what's nice about it is, is that you can arrange your uh, group, which is the kitchen, the bathroom, the living room, whatever, you can actually move these out if you already have them selected. You can move them over to the images available and then add and reinsert them in the order that you want to print. So, and that saves a lot of time because if you had to, move everything all individually, you know, and you had 100 photos, that would take a little bit of time to do. Here, you match them up to the areas and then you just move the areas to the appropriate positions that you wanted to print, okay? I'm gonna click on the done here. Okay, and that's pretty much it for our um, di new digital image photos. I'm gonna unmute you all here and see if you have any questions. Okay, any questions I can answer for you on the digital photo images? I have one. I Go ahead. One. Go ahead. Okay, Dan, on the area photos, that automatically gives it a name when you type in the group area in the building estimate, correct? When you go to the scope of damage, you select area, you name it, then it creates it automatically when it when you go to digital photos, yes. Okay, uh, if you create a, um, in the scope of damage and area, say I, I write a debris pile, and, and I want that because I want to be able to drop all uh, a load of piles into the debris pile, then if I delete that from the building scope, of damages will that delete it from the picture area the name we don't want to do that um you don't want to delete that from the deleted area maybe give it to for example miscellaneous or debris uh photos keep that okay. intact don't delete it especially Got if it. you already have it tagged over i believe they'll go back to the ungroup area but i wouldn't i don't like to chance it okay Got it. Okay, and another here's another question for you, my guys. Let's see if this works for you. Is when you do your prelims, you go, well, I don't have my areas already defined. What do I do? A, a lot of adjusters, what they're doing is they're creating a area within the scope of damage called prelim, and they'll just grab the appropriate photos for the prelim, and then that way when they push it up, then um, it'll have you know, for example, pre associated group photos. Okay. And that works out real well. Okay, Danny Maloney, listen, um I was I wasn't on audio when you first started. I I just have a question. When you go to thumbnail import, you select all from the tribe. Let's say you got a chip, you stick it in your your, your computer you can import all the photos into the digital photos and then you can sit there and highlight as per what you said before and drag them into certain rooms is that correct that's correct now what i would do before that is take if you had multiple claims that you went out on the same chip kind of try to divide those up into different folders with the name of the claim and then that way you'll you'll reference that claim with all the associated photos, and then they'll place them in the ungroup photos, and then you'll just grab them to the areas. All right. So in other words, you're saying if I go if I go to three different claims in one day, I need to just grab what is 
associated with, with each claim. That's what I would do. Okay. But if you want to bring it all in onto a claim and then just check box when you look at the photos or the thumbnails, you just said, okay, well, I see the address starting on the second claim. I want this is the second claim I need to bring in. You can see the address uh, that you took, you know, to start the claim off for the second right, loss. Right. Right. And then just pick those, and then and then what you'll do is then assign it to all the various different areas. It's still an ungrouped. You have the opportunity to delete all those other photos in the ungroup, and or keep them there and not even and and not even uh, use them. I don't recommend that uh, way because you don't want those photos getting mixed up uh, right. within within the same. I would never file. do that. Million years. But you know you can do it that way if you want to. Uh, I have some. I have one addresser that does that very thing. Says, "Well, I don't want to make folders. I only have two or three claims that I have for flash drive." Okay. Well, let me let let, let 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 me ask you another question, if I may, please. Okay, so I'm in Cocoa Peak last week. I go to three different claims from Matthew. <clears throat> I photograph this, 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 and this. Okay. So instead of going in and grabbing each photograph off of the chip, do I just highlight? I just highlight everything that I want to bring into that particular claim. Is that correct? You, well, from this, from from the ungroup, or before it even gets into the ungroup, you can read from the the common data source, which is going to be the flash drive, and then you can then pull the images, and you'll see the fo the thumbnails, and then you'll just use your shift key, you know, to grab in the series because you're going to take the pictures all in series. Of course. For that for that loss, and then maybe start it right at the address and then the and just one photo before the next address. Okay. And that'll okay. bring them in that way. Okay. Excellent. So Thank if you, you don't want to if you don't want to bring the folder up, that's the way to do it. Okay. Ben. ben. Yes. Don. All right. Yeah, Don. Looking at your, yeah, looking at the screen now, you pulled in photos uh for a bedroom under basement if i want to change the area basement to another thing how do i do that you just go right up to your scope of damage and i come up to basement and i go to edit okay and then i'll come over here and i'll just call it, what was that bedroom yeah got it that's it okay thanks and then hit done and now come up and hit digital photos yeah, because it's Thanks. a placer, you know, it's placed in whatever, wherever it's at in the system. So there's my bedroom one. This is outstanding. Hey, yeah. Dan, Dan, I got one, a question you talked about. You talked about earlier. Um, some adjusters can name an area freelance, so they'll have that for the pictures. But you can only name it in the billing scope of damage. So we don't That's correct, to... and I just leave that alone. And then once I get my prelims done, I'll take those images and I'll associate them to the exterior or the bedrooms, and then just add to it and then delete that photos photo area. Okay. So that way, when you print your estimate, you don't have photo, you don't have prelim photos as an as an estimate. All right, got it. Got it. See, we send our prelim photos in at the claim with the iPad. These guys have to bring them home and put them in the computer that night when you're just dead tired. Oh, a lot of adjusters, what they do is they take flash cards or flash drives, excuse me, and each each claim is on a separate flash drive. So they carry 10 flash drives. And then Danny, all they do each night is just put the flash drive in, select all, boom, and they're in. No Question, go ahead. What if you block that? 
guys, I really believe this is going to save you a lot of time because when you're trying to order these photos in a certain order because they said, oh, we want the bedroom to be at the top because that's where your estimate starts off, then you would have to manually, you know, take that every single photo. It was really time, you know, it takes a lot of time to do it. But if you t if you use this new function and then just move the whole room up to where it has to go, yeah, I mean it saves you um, you know saves at least thirty minutes because you might have twenty to thirty photos, but there might be all the way at the bottom and you have to ma remember the old seven you had to pick that one and manually push that up to the top and then take the next one the next one the next one if that was the room. Okay, but then that's what I've been doing all morning. They know it's already been a week. Still not sure about it. Need to watch for Another question? Another question? Yeah, I have one. Yes. If you if you're not doing if you're not if you're labeling each photo and you have like fifty photos but you're not putting them into the area of photos by, you know, by room. And then you get ready to print them under the, under the most recent uh, stem cell edition. I could, when I got ready to print, let's say I had 50 photos, I could print like photo one, three, five, seven, nine, and then go back and it would automatically move that photo from the left column over to the right column. And then when I know how many I had left and I could put them in what order I want. Now, when I use your program, if I'm not going to the area of photos, I'm moving all the photos over to the right column, but it's still showing them over on the left column. That's correct. So I've got a problem um, to keep. It's driving me nuts to make sure I don't duplicate. Right. Um, I have brought that up to the programming staff, and uh, they're looking into that because the 7 did do, you're absolutely correct, the 7 did eliminate it from the left. But from what I understood, and I could be mis, uh, misspeaking here, is that when you, uh, the reason why it's there over on the right side and doesn't delete itself is because you still have items that you can take those and put them associated and drag and drop into the area of photos region. So that's why we had, we, we could have caused uh, some damage uh, to the file if we didn't, if, if we eliminated those from the ungroup function. So well, the problem is, the uh, problem is if you've got a if you got a large loss or you have a complicated loss. I was on a loss yesterday where I took over a hundred photographs. There were five five different buildings. There was no damage to four of them, and I didn't necessarily take the photographs in the same order that I wanted to present them in terms of what I'm shooting out into my report. So I really had to literally manually do this. And I had to move them up, and I didn't do it by room. I'm glad to know that. That's going to save me some time. But I, I, there was no way to manually, other than to manually put those 100 photographs in order and then just click one through. Okay, so one. now let me let me give you a trick. Would you like okay. to see it? Sure. Okay. All right. Let's take these images here. I'm going to take images 85 to 93, and then I'm going to take image 910. Right? Okay. And that's that's the one you want. So I'm gonna use my shift key. I'm marking this one and then marking this one here and shifting it. Right. I'm also right. now gonna use my control key and mark that one. I have okay. all the items that are selected, is that correct? Right. Okay, so let me just call this uh living room or something. Okay. Or bathroom or something. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select bath. I'm then going to come up here and rename to selected to. As I do this, it's going to rename those items. But you're still saying, well, I still have to take those images and uh, place them up into the bathroom so they're all in one group, correct? So I can do a couple things. One, I could right click and then I can sort by, or excuse me, sort by alphabetical. Okay. See this? So as I do this, now my bathrooms are all lined up. Okay, and then I can the just problem, continue here's, on. Here's, here's again. Here's a problem though. You're you're doing it by 
room where, you know, if I'm writing an estimate, I'm going to have damage in all those rooms. But I might, let me give you a couple of categories here. Let's say I'm on the exterior. And one of the things I'm picking up on, I work for a carrier. So one of the things they want me to do is look for adverse exposures that they may have for the risk. Okay, so I'm looking for, which has nothing to do with the claim per se as far as the claim estimate. But they mm-hmm. still want me to show any adverse exposures that could present a risk before they shouldn't renew the policy. Otherwise, I might also have another category for issues of deferred maintenance. Here's wood rot. Here's, you know, here's some installation defect or something sure. like that. So All I'm right. picking up other. I'm picking up other pictures of other items that have nothing to do. I'm not. We're not going to pay for this law, for those items. I'm not going to put it in. So you're not making an estimate it. out of those. That is fine. That's right. What you what but you would have, do? I might have ten what, rooms where I do have damage, and I am paying for in those ten rooms. But I may have as many photographs outside the scope of the estimate as I do inside. That's where. It's so well, you can. That's no problem. I, that's no problem. What you could do is you can come up here to the global print screen. You grab your photos. Same thing. Okay. Nothing's changed. Okay. You're going to have the selected print items uh, that are going to be. It's going to read the thumbnails right now. That's what it's doing. Okay. Now, the thing is, is I've got unassigned, okay? That could be your right. deferred or whatever. You right. don't have to, and then you just can grab this anywhere you want and place them over to the order print images. So right. if you needed to come up and let me just scroll down here. So let's say this is my starting of my loss, which is, in, which is actually on my scope of damage, and you're going to put those in. So I'm going to move those over here. Then I'm going to come okay. down here, and then maybe if I have another one, which kitchen, which is here, right? Then if you need to come over here and select the ungroup items that represent those other uh, types of uh, you know descriptions that you had mentioned, I can come over here and just move these down. Or move them wherever I want to. Yeah, understand that. That that's the problem, though, <clears throat> is because if you got a hundred images on the left side, and let's say every one of those hundred images, let's just say there's one image per room, and 50, 50 rooms aren't in the scope of estimate. And it, so right. I got a hundred items in the head. I've got to keep track of it. I want to send a hundred photographs in, one hundred separate photographs. But I sort of got, you know, oh, I haven't organized them on the left side. I don't. Room, and I can. Room, I mean, if I want. To, but once I push the photograph over to the right side to order print images, it does it doesn't there's they're still on the left side, so I have to really work twice as hard to do duplication. Understand. Yeah. Well, we're gonna look into that. That's something that we're gonna look into it and, and see what if you give me your email address, I'll get you an answer on that. How about that? Okay. Yeah. It's, so it's a, um, my email address is uh, Danny S at Simsol dot com, and then I'm going to present that at the programmers meeting and see what they want to want, explore on that to see if we can fix that issue. Well, you had or it if we in can the other version. fix it. Yeah, you had it in the other version, the last version. Right. But we've added so much to that, and there's a reason on the images why they don't disappear. And right. I know the adjusters want that just for the same thing as what you just said. So let's see if we can get that uh, to be done, and I will get back to you on that by email. Okay. okay. My name is Jim Flint, and I'll send it to you tonight or tomorrow morning. Ab- excellent. Thank you so much. Thank so you. We'll, we'll, but that's a valid point, too, guys. And another thing is, is that, you know, you are our professional, you know, eyes and ears out there. So if you think that, hey, I need to do this process a little bit easier, can you do it this way? We always take these comments very, very seriously. So um, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you you um, get a hold of us and then tell us that you want to see these changes. Okay? Hey, if, if I can add one more thing on the photographs, I'm assuming Absolutely. you've got a lot of new adjusters well, and probably good. young adjusters in there. I mean, I'm a 25-year experienced adjuster, and I've traveled all over the country, and blah, blah, blah. One that this has nothing to do with stem cell, let me give some advice here. What you, were, and you were sort of getting close to it. And get, I was up on an ice storm in New Jersey 10 years ago, and I was out there, and I was inundated with claims. I mean, two or three times more than I should have had for any one adjuster. And so I was out looking, 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 scoping, closing a few here and there, saving my photographs. 
But what I didn't, I didn't have a backup system on my laptop. And I had a hard drive crash. And I had to go back for, it took me six weeks, I had to go back and reinspect every damn one of the things just for photographs. I had those scope notes and all that. What I could have, I could have saved myself so much time trouble and every these other adjusters could too, by going out and buying a hundred dollar portable hard drive. So for, if you guys are just starting out out there, go buy yourself a portable hard drive and make sure you got backup on your photographs and keep that separate away from the computer. Yeah. So if somebody steals your desktop or your laptop, you still got your photographs. And that's excellent advice. Um, another thing that you might want to consider guys is buy, getting a Dropbox account. OneDrive, uh, you can get that from, um, you, there's all different types of, of cloud-based systems. Uh, so Google makes one, Google Drive. And if you come up and you name your photo photos in there, you could put all your photos in here into the Google Drive. And then that way, when you, uh, if something does happen to your system, then you will always have a backup. So yes. Portable hard drive, uh, cloud-based types of automatic saving, uh, that works for a while. And that was an excellent uh, question or suggestion. Is here's a better here's, here's a better here's here's here, here's a better Come idea. On. Okay, I I use a Nikon I use a Nikon D thirty four. Every picture I take goes right into my phone. Every single picture, the Bluetooth takes, when I take a picture, it goes right into my phone. And it backs it up to the cloud, and it's also on my iPad, it's also on my, my, my Android. And that, and that is a uh, Android camera or a web camera? That's an Icon T3400. It's, yeah, it's... it's it's got Bluetooth on it, and you can put it to an iPhone, an Android. You can put it to a pad. You can put it to whatever. And then you don't have to worry about. You don't. You don't ever have to worry about losing any of your business. Well, there. That's that's great advice. Um, and you're absolutely correct. If you can take these photos, writes it to a, you know, the disc. And then also writes it to the cloud, and you might just you might access it from the cloud anyway. So if you had Dropbox or whatever drive that you have, yeah, but then you can reference that and the import and grab it there if you need to. Yeah, but, but the is thing is, with with, with 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 the camera, I don't care if it's Canon or uh, Nikon or this or that or Canon whatever. If you get the one, you know, it 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 drops it right into your phone. Or to a pad if you're walking around with a pad, it's it, you know you you don't have to worry about losing anything. Right. That's absolutely correct. But it's using some type of transfer device of, as Bluetooth to to do that operation, and that's that's a that's great advice. So if anybody the, wants, the, the Nikon comes with that software where it's holy fuck. Self because they're custom. Hey guys, I just want to be respectful to Danny's time. We got about five minutes for questions. If not, if we don't get it in on this call, you can always email Danny S at Simsol com with all questions from this webinar. Just a heads up, five more minutes. Okay. 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 I do want to show you one other thing that it's not flood related. If we have wind adjusters out here, you might want to see what we did here. So, so basically, I'm just going to click on done for just a second, and I'm talking about uh, the Eagle View and also Sky Measure report that you can order, and we automatically uh, can set those up. Well, not automatically, but you would follow this procedure to click on roof once you get your uh, Sky Measure report or Eagle View report. If you come up here and go to third party on your roofs. Eagle View or Sky Measure. I'm going to click on Sky Measure. I'm going to click OK. And now it's asking me where that location is. So I have this Sky Measure uh, folder. Once I double click on that, look, all my all my shapes are in there. I've got photos that automatically came in. The only thing I need to do 
is come up and select what type of uh, roof type I want and what how much waste factor I want. Then if I click on scope, and, and I know we have some wind adjusters on the line. So if you could just uh, go into roof and let's see how fast we can do this roof. As soon as it launches, there we go. And then all I need to do is run a macro. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna bring the little window over here. There we go. Let's say it's an arc comp roof with felt. Click on done. And now it's asking me for the drip edge. And now if you take a look, that's how fast I did my roof. Whoa. And that's and that is the proper quantities. Does that, bring your does, that bring, does that bring your diagram over to on the uh scope of day on the um on the report itself, it does not. You'll have to add that. There is a report that gives you the diagram or right. actually it's embedded in the report so, so you can use, add, you can like add I use the sky on. measure i use the sky measure diagram rather than it didn't pull but it right. didn't make a diagram in exact in that is correct it does not okay gotcha okay but you can just attach that document right right and then right. that will be your report and then you've got your diagram already within your report and you're good to go can you show me how to do the attachment there Sure. Like that, Come super, up here as attachment, as click example. on new attachment. Uh, I can pick anything, PDF or anything, but I can come over right. here and then click attach document. If I go to the desktop here and I select uh, the Eagle View sample, let's see if I've got the, I'm looking for my zip folder, excuse me. I've got lots of stuff in here. But I'm going to, there's my zip folder right there. So if I double click on this, uh, on the zip, that's the wrong one. I want to open my zip up. I can't unattach with a zip folder. I just can't do it. Want me to grab something? Okay. I need to open up the zip, and then from the zip folder, there is a PDF document. Right, right. Okay. And then you would just grab that because we did that for another company uh, that is no longer in business and it worked out real well. We can grab the we can grab the report. So let me get that report and unzip it real quick. Hold on just a second. Yeah, no. Okay, so let me get my report here and just open that up. Don't know what Say what? No, I haven't done that. Okay. Uh, in this uh, Excel spreadsheet, they didn't give me the actual report. They gave me all the pictures. They gave me the XML and the CSV, but they didn't provide me the PDF. Okay. So I'm sorry. But what you would do is when they do order it for you, they'll give you two files. They're going to give you a zip folder, and then they're going to give you the actual report. Okay. And the report, you just... Go to new attachment, go to um, attach document, find the location, and then bring it in. Let's see if I have something here on pictometry. Oh, yes. How about this? I do have a report for an, a pictometry report, which here is the PDF. And now it's going to uh, bring that in. So let me bring that over for you so you can take a look at it. There you go. There's your report. Ooh, wow. So I, as you see Dan, this, it, it'll Danny, bring it right that, up for you. Do that it. again, please. Do that again, please. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over so you can all see. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for the actual report. Uh, let's see if I go to desktop here and I've got uh, pictometry. Okay. Okay. And pictometry, this is an uncompressed folder. It's so right. it's been unzipped already. Um, I believe, uh, I believe that the uh, Eagle view is going to give you two different files, one zip and one, uh, PDF. So I'm just going to come up here, pick up the, PDF, which is right here. So as I bring it in, there it is. Okay. It's real easy to attach it. You can attach anything in SimSol. So there is our port. 
Wow. Isn't that great? Nice. Very nice. Now check this out. This is what I like. 3D. All our slopes are matched over here. So you have nine pitches. You've got, and that gives you the total. Tells you what 60% of the, what the roof is. Your total roofing, remember I told you it was 82 squares? It's 822958 square foot. And then you can look at each slope and it'll tell you what the, the size of that slope is in square footage. I want to learn how to do that. Is that Where's not awesome? Where's your pitch? Is that, what is it 8, 12, 6, 12? What is it? Yeah, it's you know, let's take a look. Pitch. It's still in the, still in the report. Take okay. The the pitch. Pitch. Oh, yeah. I could make a lot of money with that. Selling there's the, our edges. Is that not just the prettiest thing? And look, there's your dimensions. 45 feet, 5 out, 19, 19, 26. Our ridge is at 153, our hips at 177, uh, valleys 290, Beautiful. 393. Beautiful. Man. Now take a look at our area square foot, our pitch, our azimuth. You want to know what the slope was, there you go. Pull it up. There's our E, okay. there's our rake, there's our step flashing that we're going to be using. Okay, okay. That's what I was looking for, was that, 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 that spreadsheet. That's right. Geometry is another country. This is their program. So what this is, it's a third-party program called Pictometry or Geoestimator. They will they will provide a they will provide a report just like this. So you will get two. You will get a zip folder, and then you will get a PDF. And most carriers and most ro uh, roofers will accept it too. Absolutely, because I have they have contracts with these companies. Exactly. They will accept them because they're using it. Them, they're just their staff adjusting exactly. as well. So that works out real well. Um, so that's that's what we did do, and we added uh, that into our system. It's an easy interface. We had it on seven, but we cleaned it up in eight. Okay. Can you go, so that, can you go back to your macro there and just show us what you did on your macro? Let me see the categories you put in there on your macro. Absolutely. So I went over to the scope of damage. I went into the roof. Let me just do the whole procedure again so you can see how fast it is. Okay. And do you have several do you normally have several roof macros? Absolutely I do. Okay. So I'll have pretty much you guys are you know old time roofers here. I mean old time uh, uh roof adjusters <laughs> and wind adjusters here. Well, um so that's why you and you know why I know that because that's why you're in flood. You don't want to get up on the roofs. <laughs> so that's why we have this tool that so it keeps you off the roof. That's exactly. Um, plus drone technology. So, anyways, what uh, he wants to see is how we do this and make a roof up. So I'm going to come up here to roof. I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit third party. I'm going to select either Eagle View or Sky Measure. Okay, I'm going to click the Sky Measure. I'm going to click OK. I need to know where this is located. So I put it on my desktop. So I'm going to double click on desktop. I find the zip folder. Now, Sky Measure is going to give you a zip folder and a PDF. As I select the PDF, excuse me, the zip folder, it will uncompress and then actually take the appropriate photos and I can change these so if I want to change this I'm sorry uh, come back here real quick but what did I do here hold on just a second oh I'm in an area hold on just a second. it's gonna bring up all my if I didn't have any photos in here it would, it would be fine Let's see where there we go um, I can pick whatever photo that I want. Okay, so if I want the west side, I can bring that up. I want the east side or the above. It's going to pick the top two is what it, or is what's going to happen. It tells me what my total squares are going to be. Um, I all I need to do is put the 
waste factor in. So that's going to give me 81.39 on the removal side, 93.61 on the total side. I simply just go to scope after I bring that in. So my quantities have now been added. Wow. Now, I need to come up to macro or whatever macro that you want to run, and I'm going to select the R&R comp roof with felt, click on done. Wait, 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 wait. Back, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> I need to keep going. Hold on. I'll get it off in just a second. I don't want to do wind right now. Hold on, let me let me de let on. me delete this again. Hold on, just a second. I guess there's go a back to the going with it. Going into macros. Okay, let me let me start over again, one more time. Okay, I'm going to come up into the exterior. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry, correction. I'm going to go to roof. My fault. Click on the roof. Go to third party. Pick either Eagle View or Sky Measure. Now it's asking me where is that located? I'm going to say it's located on my desktop. And I'm double left clicking on this, which then uncompresses and measures, puts my square amounts in there. Don't forget to put the waste in. Now I'm ready to go to scope. All right, now if you want to run a macro, then you're gonna you're gonna select it. Now remember what a macro is. A macro is pre-selected line items associated to a name. So in this macro that I created, I put in all the appropriate line items that I think that should be on the roof. Drip edge, maybe ice shield, maybe skylights. Okay. And I'll put this, you know, the type of architectural shingles that I want to use because that's what I need my macro on. So So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna run a macro. Now look at the macro name. I'm gonna bring it over right now. There's the macro name. Okay, this I defined this before I ran this because I needed a ma I made a macro up for this demonstration. So I left click on it and click done. Now what's going to happen is it's going to stop when it needs a quantity from you. In this case, it needs the linear foot of galvanized drip edge. So I'm going to put it in. I'm just going to make something up here. And I'm going to click done. It goes to the next line item. So now, if you take a look, I've got remove T-lock, interlock, composition shingles. I've got the replacement. I've got the felt. Remember that I'm only doing the replacement of felt, not the removal of felt, because they consider it an overage. And then I've got replace turtle box, turtle vents. And if I had that, and I can say, oh, we have 10 vents. And then I've got the remove and replace galvanized drip edge. So you can define numerous, you can go back to VSS and add more line items if I need to for that roof. Well, there's going to be my question, like things like boots or, or chimney flashes and things like that. Yep. You almost, even with a macro, you're pretty much going to still have to go back to that scope in that particular area, like for roof, and add a few of those singular items that Absolutely. Really and then once you do so that, they won't, they let's, won't let's you won't go up have and see boots. I don't think it's going to call boots, but... Uh, roof, it's it's, it's a boot jack, a roof jack. It's a roof jack. Yeah, yeah, we still had done a better job with the name. It used to be boot, but now it's you got to really look for it. Maybe today. Right, it's roof jack is what it is. And if you come over yeah. here with composition shingles, mm -hmm. and you select it, and I'm going to do a one and three, which is right here, and I'm going to say, oh, I need five. Now look at this right now, guys. I added this. I added the turtle vents. I added the roof jacks. So if I want to make, I want to modify my macro. I just mark them all and go macro record. So instead of giving it a new name, 
Hold on a second. I did the wrong one. Uh, macro record. And uh, instead of giving it a new name, I could use the existing name. But That's how I problem. modify a macro. If you use that macro on your next claim, you got a 14, 14 square simple gable. Yep. You use that macro, it's going to bring over five root checks. No, it's only going to give you one roof jack, and you're going to provide whatever whatever the amount you want. You're kidding. It doesn't it didn't bring that quantity over. It doesn't bring the quantity of the roof jack off the macro. Remember <clears throat> that okay. it could be it could be anything that you put in. But it but it automatically brings one over there where there might not be any to accept it. That's correct. And then all you need to do is make sure if there's no roof jacks, you right click, hit delete, and move on. You know what I mean? Right. But I do want to know though. Yeah, macros are great. You've got to be careful with them because sometimes they'll put things in there that shouldn't be. Exactly, and if you're a if you're a flood adjuster and you use a macro and, and and you bring it in, you might have a commode in the living room. Right. So I don't right. know if you have that or not in your living room, but you might. Exactly. But yeah, you have to be careful on macros. You want to identify what the line items are, pop them in, and address them as needed. Like I said, it's easier to add than it is to delete. I mean, excuse me, easier to delete than it is to add. Every okay, item that's, that's pretty much what the what. And I have two other, uh, one more section that I'd like to get to real quick, just to show you what we've done on forms. If you click on our forms, uh, what we what we've added is anybody work for USAA here? I have anybody past, work I don't know. anybody work for USAA? Okay. If you did, take a look. We have a new EFT file, an EFT form, which is called USAA EFT. <coughs> That's required on all uh, USA claims now. Really? So you put the date in and you get a signature. And then you say, I authorize my payment. This, the insured will have to sign this. This is for payment, how they're going to do electronic payments to, you, to the insured. Excuse me. That's one thing. Another thing that I'm going to leave you with is going to be a new form that is going to be called. I'm going to bring it down here, signed handbook, watch this. So if I come up and bring the form called signed handbook, bring it up, it'll put your signature up and all the insurer has to do is sign. See, we've already got it. Which is fine, I don't give a shit. But that's okay, exactly so that's what that one. Do. Now, what you guys have not seen, which is brand new, just came out two days ago, or three days ago, is the new Advance payment request. Now look at this puppy. This is what FEMA wants now. So that has all the verbiage that they've always wanted on an advance payment form. So the only thing you all need to do is just run the advance payment. Let's say I'm making five thousand dollars for the building, just like you did before. Put 1,000 for the contents, gotten any discount. and then there you go. But it gives all the terminology that and that they wanted in the in the advance payment. So that's a brand new form, hot off the presses. Okay, so I want to thank you very much for your time. And I hope this was beneficial for you. And uh, you can email Mathis. Mathis, can you give your email address, please? So it's mathism at simsol.com, M A T H I S M at simsol.com, or Danny S at simsol.com. Okay, so if you have any uh, things you would like to see in the program or. Yeah. Or what you want to do is, uh, you know, talk about that photo module that it didn't delete the other areas in the ungroup as you push them over to the right-hand side for Im images to print. The other guy was the one that Write that down, and we, we're going to do some research on that one, okay? Right. Okay.
Very so, guys, I hope this was beneficial. Um, we'd really like to have a survey. If you could just give us a quick note on how uh, that you found the seminar was uh, helpful or not helpful. Yep, no problem.